Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer, and today we're heading into Costco. I'm gonna teach you how to shop healthy style when it comes down to stocking your pantry. Things that are in your pantry don't have to be unhealthy just because they're shelf stable. So let's go in and let's see what they've got. They change things up all the time. So right now we're filming this March 2020. Things are always gonna change, but some of the legacy products are always there. So let's have some fun with this and let's learn a thing or two. Awesome, thanks. Uh -huh. All right, so we got all the regular nuts and snacks here. Let's see what we can find. I think it goes without saying that any of these foods right here are gonna be loaded with high fructose corn syrup, <laughs> any kind of preservative. We're just gonna avoid those altogether. We're in like the straight up junk aisle right here. So let's go and let's try to get to the pseudo healthy aisle so we can start investigating some of the imposters that are there. Okay, here's something interesting. Ah, this is a perfect one to address. Okay, so. These are little cheese things here. Here's what's wild. They totally trick you. So you think that this is gonna be just a good, clean, simple cheese snack, right? You think it would be keto friendly, anything like that? No. Okay, so yes, the first ingredient is Parmesan cheese, which of all the shelf stable cheeses, I would say that Parmesan cheese is probably the best. It's pasteurized, it's gonna be the lowest in lactose. But here's where things start to get a little bit weird. All of a sudden we've got wheat flour there. What the heck's going on? And then we've got cornstarch, we've got soy lecithin, okay. First of all, always look for sunflower lecithin over soy lecithin. No need to have soy in there whatsoever, except for the fact that it's cheaper and manufacturers like it. But these are really more of a pita chip that have been disguised as a cheese snack. So if you're doing keto, these are not gonna fly. Okay, so let's just keep those out of the picture. Not healthy to begin with, just because of all the wheat in there. Let's check these paleo bars out. Okay, then we get to these paleo bars. These have caught my eye a couple of times because I usually do like paleo type foods, whether it's for my toddler or even for myself, if I'm not cycling in and out of keto at that time. Um, so we have to look at, what are the ingredients here? Ah, here we go. Organic whole almonds, organic honey, organic coconut, organic pumpkin seeds, coconut oil, Brazil nuts, pumpkin seed protein. These are actually really, really clean. The only thing that I don't like is that they're using uh, organic honey now the problem with honey is it's pure fructose. Okay, fructose is gonna go straight to the liver and it's gonna go through what's called de novo lipogenesis. We can only hold about 30 to 40 grams of fructose in our liver before it starts getting stored as fat. So that's the only thing that I have with this that's a problem. I do like that everything's organic, even the vanilla flavor. You have to look for natural flavorings because natural flavorings are a total trapdoor. Okay, just because they say natural doesn't mean anything. Okay, it just means that they got the name natural. I mean, what else is natural? I mean, there's a lot of things that are natural that aren't exactly good for you. So this would, I think, make the list. And it's actually, that's a pretty good price. Oops, oh, sorry, I did the wrong thing. And actually, that's a pretty good price. Okay, so you got $12.49 for a box of 20. I mean, that's like less than a dollar a pop. That's really, really good. So I would say these are a pretty good shelf-stable food. The thing we have to look at is, ah, uh, they don't last for very long. See this, we're filming this in March of 2020, and these are only good until July of 2020. So for true shelf stable, it's not very good, but for a healthy pantry item, I'm gonna go ahead and grab these. All right, cereals are a world of just hidden landmines. Everyone's promoting whole grains. Everyone's promoting this and that. And the reality is most grains, almost all of them, are going to be high in gluten. Okay, they're going to have gluten, they're going to have gliadin, which triggers a prolamin response within the body. It triggers an inflammatory response within the gut. So even if you don't have celiac, you could potentially be dealing with some issues from gluten. So most of the cereals are out of the equation. Granolas, they sketch me out a little bit simply because they're calorie bombs, right? So even if we do find a, like a grain-free granola here, keto and paleo friendly, I love to see that. Um, here's where we have to, 175 calories for 18 servings. Now, I will say, when we look through the ingredients, I can almost guarantee this is gonna be a pretty clean product. We just have to be cognizant of the calories here. Okay, you have 1 18th of this and you've got almost 200 calories. But pumpkin seeds, so we have a lot of zinc there, that's solid. Sunflower seeds, not the best omega-6, omega-3 profile, but it can work. Dried coconut, uh, pecans, that's my go-to nut, so I'm happy to see that, good high omega-3 nut. Coconut oil, coconut sugar, coconut syrup, then almond flour, cassava flour. 
Okay, that's great. You always want to see cassava flour over tapioca flour. Okay, cassava flour, it comes from the same root. It's the same plant, ultimately. Tapioca comes from cassava, but tapioca is where they take the root and they essentially dry it out and you're left with just the fibrous starch, which is okay, except it can trigger some pretty serious bloating. Cassava has more nutrients to it, although it is higher in carbohydrates. So that probably contributes to, well, the overall eight grams of carbohydrates in this. So if you're doing a low carb diet, it might not be the thing, but if you're looking for an overall shelf stable thing, look at this is good until October of 2020. Not a bad thing to be stocking your pantry with if you just need some quick, good, clean calories. So if you're gonna have some cereal, I would say this is probably a good fit. Actually, I wanna compare that to this, right? This is the one that is not a lower carb one. Whole grain rolled oats, cane sugar, soy oil. Okay, soy oil, let me just make this video very easy and short for you. If it has a bunch of soy oil in it, that's a low quality oil, whether it's organic or not, okay? High oleic soy oil, still not good. So this immediately, not gonna fly. But also, huh, there's more calories in this. Okay, 250 for a three quarter cup, that's, that's pretty crazy. So I'm gonna stick with that one. Unfortunately, not a lot of cereals we can get here. This is kind of cool, what's this? RX Oats. So here's the thing, with, uh, with oats, even if they're gluten-free oats, they can still trigger a cross-reaction within the body. Quick little science nerd lesson. What happens with gluten is you have these different cross-reactions that trigger antibodies to release within your body, and that's what causes the problem with gluten, whether it's celiac or not. Turns out that certain grains, like oats, can mimic that same effect within your body. So people that are sensitive to gluten, whether they have celiac or not, and they get bloated, they hold water, they a lot of times will notice the same response happening when they eat oats and sometimes when they eat other grains like rice. So I don't like seeing things with heavy oats because oats are still just a cheap filler at the end of the day, but I do like they at least have gluten-free oats here. Almonds, dates as the sweetener, which is great. Egg whites, um, maple sugar. Don't be deceived by maple sugar. Still fructose, it's still sugar. It has a couple more things in the way of flavonoids and antioxidants, but still at the end of the day, sugar. Uh, natural flavors, that sketches me out a little bit. Cinnamon and sea salt. So if you're into a bunch of carbs, then this would be great. Uh, I'm not gonna get it because it's not gonna really work in my household. We eat pretty low carb, but that's not a bad deal. $14.99 for, actually, that isn't the best price. Eight cups for, that's almost two bucks a pop for oatmeal. Nah. I wanna stop and take a look at these really quick because you look at like a Kellogg's Nutri-Rain bar and you think, okay, yeah, I know Kellogg's probably not the healthiest thing. And then you look at this, Nature's Bakery. So it seems like it'd be a little bit healthier. And it probably is a little bit cleaner, but it's still first ingredient, whole wheat flour, okay? The reason that we have issues with gluten isn't because gluten per se is bad, it's because we've consumed it so much to the point where our bodies start to develop antibodies to it. Then second ingredient, cane sugar. Then fig paste, which is again, gonna be that pure fructose. Any sugar that's coming from fruit is going to go straight into storage if you don't burn it almost immediately. Okay, uh, brown rice syrup, blueberry jam, which consists of cane sugar, then naturally milled sugar, then rice, starch, glycerin, blueberries. This is quite honestly, just as bad. Okay. it's easy to see how food marketing can really make you believe something is clean. I would avoid those. Almond keto bites, Let's see what's in this. Never seen these before. All right, here we have almond flour, inulin, erythritol, almonds, natural flavor, flax seeds. Okay, not bad, but I don't like seeing inulin as the second ingredient. What's gonna happen with inulin is you're gonna get a lot of bloating. It's a prebiotic fiber, which has a lot of positive effects within the body, but in this particular case, I think it's a little too high up on the ingredient list. If you're not adjusted to consuming inulin, you're gonna get very bloated. It's a prebiotic fiber, so it starts basically, uh, doesn't digest, so it causes bacteria to flood to it to break it down, which actually is a, quite a good thing in terms of building up gut diversity, but I don't think that these are all that shelf stable. Sell by 520, so they're somewhat shelf stable. But the other thing is, we also have a bunch of erythritol, so when you combine inulin and erythritol, I think you end up with Bloat City. I'm not a big fan of Bloat City. These also aren't the best price, nine bucks. Um, if you're doing keto and you really want to treat, that might work. I'm gonna pass on those because those are the kinds of things that I don't want laying around the house. Way too easy to just load up on, have way too many calories. All right, let's talk canned goods for just a minute, because I think this is very important, especially if you're focusing on things that can be in your pantry for a longer period of time, but still be healthy. Most of the canned fruit, I would just avoid, especially at Costco, you're gonna find uh, it's in 100% pineapple juice. Whenever it's in juice, you're getting more of that sugar, more of that fructose. And we have to remember, fructose is not good. I would rather you have sugar over fructose, okay? Let's see what else we've got here. 
Yeah, it looks like almost all the fruits are going to be in the same boat. 100% fruit juice, extra light syrup, um, fruit juice. Yeah, okay, so not looking too good there. Uh, here's a good one to point out. And I don't mean to be just a negative Nelly. I know I've only grabbed a couple things. We'll get the things that I think are good. I like these a lot, but just remember, they're not made with just straight cauliflower. They are made with cassava, okay? Then sunflower oil, then cauliflower, then rice, then whole grain brown rice, then sorghum. So overall, it's actually a really clean blend. I actually quite like it. So if you're not doing keto, it's good to go. You just have to remember that this still ultimately cassava flour that's been fried in oil, okay? Although it is fried in sunflower oil, which I don't think is the best oil to be frying in. I would have loved to see avocado oil. Like the Siete chips will make their chips in avocado oil. I don't know if they have those here at Costco or not, but um, so although it's not the best food in the world, it would be something that would be better to give to your kids than typical chips, okay? I would much rather see a lower glycemic carbohydrate like cassava, which is a root starch like that. Um, and I'd you know, like to see it diversified like that. I'm not gonna get it, but just so you know, this is probably, I would rate it a five on a scale of one to 10. Okay, here's a perfect chance. Okay, so we've got organic kale, and then a question that comes up a lot. Organic high oleic sunflower oil sea salt, vitamin E. This is a very clean product overall. I would absolutely stock this. It's a great way to get some kale in. A high oleic sunflower oil means that they've concentrated the sunflower oil to remove some of the other components and make it more high oleic. So what that means is they've made it more shelf stable by highlighting the positive attributes of sunflower oil. Oleic acid is actually really good. Oleic acid is one of the main reasons we want olive oil, one of the main reasons we want avocado oil. So when you see high oleic, it does mean they're trying to take the more positive attributes of it. But what they're doing is they're taking a normally unstable fat and they're making it stable by concentrating the oleic compounds. It's very similar to hydrogenation, except much healthier. So don't be afraid of it, but you still want to look at what the underlying oil is. For example, if it's high oleic soybean oil, it's still cruddy soybean oil. If it's high oleic canola oil, it's still cruddy canola oil. Since sunflower oil is kind of net neutral in my opinion, I think these are good to go. Okay. Raisins, pure fructose, wouldn't recommend that. The same thing with, uh, <laughs> with prunes, although they do make you go to the bathroom. Uh, I don't know if it's the best bet here. Any kind of dried fruit, again, getting back to that broken record, concentrated fructose. I think all this dried fruit, we can just go ahead and skip. Let's go look over here. Okay, in the world of canned veggies, green beans, let's see what they've got here. Green beans, water, sea salt. Let's see if this is non-BPA. It doesn't say, but it probably is. Most, most of them are avoiding BPA these days. I'm gonna pass on this just because I think there's more nutrient-dense canned food that we can get. But not terrible. Green beans, again, I'd probably give them a five on a scale of one to 10. Let's see. Olives from a vitamin D standpoint, not gonna spend a lot of time on them, but uh, just be careful. They're total sodium bombs, so you just got to watch out there. Spanish olives. Okay, I love these artichoke hearts. There's just one big problem with them, okay? First of all, artichokes, prebiotic fiber, one of the best fibers you can consume when it comes down to helping your gut bacteria grow, okay? Helping yourself get that gram-positive bacteria that you need to defeat lipopolysaccharides from leaking into your bloodstream and just helping stabilize your overall gut biome. There's just one big problem here. They're in canola oil, okay? That's a big bummer. We don't, let's wait for this. So here's the thing. They're not cooked in canola oil, okay? So the canola oil hasn't been denatured, which doesn't really mean a whole, whole lot. But it, the thing is, is these artichokes aren't cooked in it. So they don't have the oil soaked into it. So this is such a good deal on the artichokes and artichokes are so healthy. I get these, I just give them a thorough bath, okay? I rinse the oil off and then I feel like I'm in a much better situation. Rinse them off and a lot of times I'll drizzle a little bit of olive oil or I'll take some avocado oil spray and I'll spray that on them, put a little bit of pepper on them. So yeah, you lose the marination, but this is still a really good price. You're not gonna find that better. And this is like one of the best things that you could stock your pantry with simply because they're gonna fill you up and they're one of the best veggies that you honestly can get. You know what, I'm gonna go grab some protein powders while I'm at it because I wanna make sure that I stick within a budget and still get some protein that would be shelf stable. Oh, this is cool. I have seen comment after comment asking for me to review these. And I actually just found out, yeah, 
So this is a protein, like ready to drink protein, but it's super, it's super hydrating tasting. It's a very, very clean, but look at the ingredients, water, whey protein isolate, which is exactly what you want. And most ready to drink proteins do not use isolate. It's where the protein is isolated, keyword isolate from the whey, right? So it's whey protein isolate, very clean protein. Then they use erythritol. Then we've got sodium citrate, we've got phosphoric acid, which are just natural stabilizers. Those are good to go. But what I really like, they're using fruit juice for the color. And then they're using Reb A stevia leaf extracts. So they're actually focusing on making this a lower carb product rather than having uh, sugar in it or even worse, sucralose or aspartame. So a huge shout out to them on that. Um, they're now at Costco's, I know that. They've been at Costco, but I think they had some of their other versions. This is their newer version with stevia. So definitely, definitely recommend a huge shout out to them. Uh, and hopefully that answers some of the questions that people have been asking about that. Most of these ready to drink proteins, I'm not a fan of. Like, um, here's one for instance, uh, yeah says grass-fed. I've talked about this in a specific protein video. Yeah. Filtered water, grass-fed milk protein concentrate. Not whey protein, milk protein, and concentrate, which means it's not even isolate. And then organic agave. Okay, so we've got pure fructose again there. You see what I'm going with that? Most of the ready drinks are not good. Just gotta be really, really careful. You can find some good ones. You just have to, you have to weed through them. You have to watch that other video to see that. Yeah, they've got keto products, things like that, but in terms of bang for the buck with that, I don't know, not something you necessarily need to stock your pantry with. If I was really interested in stocking my pantry for the long haul, uh, this is usually the protein powder I recommend. Whey protein isolate, see, whey protein isolate, cocoa, okay, natural flavors, not the biggest fan, but it's all good. Uh, it's, you know, small amounts. Lecithin, probably sunflower lecithin, salt, stevia, uh, leaf extract, and a little bit of xanthan gum, which in small amounts is good to go. Compare that to like another protein powder, which let's take a look at this one. Oh, whoa, whoa, microfiltered protein blend, whey protein concentrate, whey protein isolate, whey protein, oh my gosh, micellar casein, egg albumin, gluten-free cookie crumbs, rice flour, sugar, tapioca starch. Okay, I think I rest my case. If you want clean, lean protein powder, I technically consider it a pantry staple if you're someone that's uh, trying to keep lean. I usually like pea protein, I usually like hemp protein, but I don't like the plant-based proteins that they have here at Costco too much. Orgain is great, but I prefer some of the others. I like Sun Warrior, for instance. Um, okay, let's go ahead and let's go grab some other stuff. Let's get a sample here. Keto trail mix. Almonds, pepitas, dried cheddar cheese. Pecans, mac... Wow. Some... Ah, okay, here's what's funny. I'm going to speak quietly because I'm right by the sample station. Really, actually, a very good macronutrient profile in this. Um, pepitas, almonds. So almonds, the main one. And then it gets down to macadamia nuts. And then what do they do? They take these perfect fats, right? and then they load it with sunflower oil. They take almonds, okay, then they take macadamia nuts, high in omega-7 palmitoleic acid. They take pecans, high in alpha linolenic acid. I mean, we have a great blend here. And then we have this bifidobacterium, they're adding probiotics, really a good product. They just go with the sunflower oil. However, however, they very easily could have gone for soybean oil. They very easily could have gone for canola oil. Sunflower is the best out of all of those. I just, it just, boggles my mind as to why this is done but 1389 that's kind of a cool nut blend i think for the sake of this pantry haul i might actually go ahead and try this they, ma they make the cut they make the thomas delauer approved list and granted as, as you know there are so many different <laughs> so many different videos i could do on pantry items at costco i'm just having a heyday going through some of the newer stuff and some of the stuff they have here now they really are making a solid move to have healthier options. So we can do more of these videos. Just make sure you let me know in the comment section. I'm glad we went this way. You should always have your pantry stocked up with apple cider vinegar. It is a must. You know, when it comes down to balancing out your gut biome, when it comes down, actually we'll go around this way. So sure, acetic acid has pectin in it, which is very, very good at helping uh, good bacteria proliferate within your gut. And it also can help stave off bad bacteria, but more importantly, it just helps with your overall blood sugar levels. That's probably the biggest thing. Let's go ahead and see what's down here. Spam, I think it goes without saying. If you're looking for true shelf-stable pantry items, um, you wanna go with bagged beans over canned beans. They're just gonna last a lot longer. Uh, let's see what they've got here though. Oh, this is kinda cool. Super bean mix, what is this? Ready to eat, ooh, I don't like that the first one is soybeans. Whenever I see that, I just think, well, you're just trying to volumize a product with something that's inexpensive. 
They did that though more so to jack up the protein content. Soybeans are technically a complete protein. So for someone that's vegetarian, they're gonna wanna do that. I just think that you're doing yourself a disservice because of the phytoestrogens that are in there. Phytoestrogens lead to more aromatization, more estrogen within the body, which leads to more fat depositing in your body. I highly recommend you be very careful with soy, even if it's organic. So this would be really cool if it was just chickpeas, black beans, and kidney beans. But I understand the soy in there for the protein, but unfortunately it doesn't make my cut that way. So just keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. More granolas, we run into the same problem there. A uh, quick note on agave syrup. Just because it's agave doesn't make it healthy. In fact, agave is pure fructose and then they concentrate it. It is one of the highest like concentrated forms of fructose that you can get. Just to give you a little science here, when you consume fructose, it absorbs through your small intestine and it goes straight through this thing called the portal vein from your intestine or ultimately from your stomach and intestine into the liver. Therefore, the liver has to process it. And since the liver can only process so much of fructose at a time, where does it store it? Well, it turns into fat via de novo lipogenesis and it stores it around the liver and around your midsection. Fructose and high fructose corn syrup end up being one of our nation as the US biggest problems. I love to shop for my pantry goods in the baked section, which we're gonna get into in just a second, simply because the baking section, you get things cheaper because they're not marketed as pantry items. They're marketed as mass baked items or mass cooking items. So we'll get to that in a second, but I just, as we approach there, um, let's see, we've got almond butter. This is just roasted almonds. The issue I have with almond butter is yes, it's going to be a little bit hard to break down because of the phytic acid, but this is a pretty good deal. $7.99, it's not organic. Uh, I don't see an organic option. If you had an organic option, it would be best. The thing you have to remember is with almonds, like I've talked about in other videos, when they shake the tree, the almonds fall to the ground. Well, they spray the ground with pesticides, so you end up running into a problem there. So I'm gonna hold off on this. Maybe I'll see an organic option. All right, now we got the world of peanut butters. Important to note something out here. When you're shopping for pantry goods, you're gonna see a lot of this. Hydrogenated vegetable oil, cotton, soybean, and rapeseed oil. Hydrogenation, that is making it a trans fat. So even if it doesn't say that there's trans fats on here, see, it says trans fat, zero grams. Well, that's because the FDA allows them to say zero grams if there's less than a half a gram per serving. Well, a serving is two tablespoons, okay? So two tablespoons, you can be getting up to 0 0.5 grams of trans fat. Just FYI, trans fats do not break down in the body. It takes 51 days to molecularly break down half of a trans fat. It wreaks havoc from an inflammatory standpoint on your body. They are chemical, they're man-made. They add a hydrogen to make a fat shelf stable. And to make matters worse, they hydrogenate soybean oil. So run away, don't walk, run away. And this isn't any jab towards Skippy because they do have their natural version that doesn't have that. It's just being honest. So far, I'm not seeing any other nut butters. I might have to settle for the regular almond butter. Uh, this stuff is great, by the way. Uh, great low calorie alternative. I love that it's just organic roasted peanuts. That's perfect. Uh, there's nothing to it other than peanuts. The problem, and I know I'm sounding like such a negative Nancy, the hard part with this is that then you get a concentrated legume, right? Concentrated lectins potentially. So if you're sensitive to lectins, if you're sensitive to peanuts, you're gonna be way more sensitive to this. Uh, although I think just for an overall just pantry item, it is pretty solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get some. Uh, I like to mix a tiny bit into some yogurt just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yeah, I did a whole separate video talking about uh, nuts at Costco, so I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time here. Best omega-3 profile uh, that you're gonna have in terms of the digestibility and everything is gonna be pecans in this case. Almonds, be a little bit weary of them. Uh, walnuts are great. It's just if you have an option to get pecans, I would go for the pecans. Let's go ahead and let's grab some of these. Although it says for optimum freshness, refrigerate after opening, they're still good to go. They're still gonna be stable even after you open them. Uh, if there are options to get them in smaller packages, I would recommend going for that. In this case, let's just get these bad boys. And I encourage you to watch the Costco nut video that I'll link in the description so that we don't have to waste a lot of time on the nuts here. Okay, let's see what we've got here. All right, then we have Truvia. Uh, this is a, if you're looking for sweeteners, obviously there's sugars, there's agaves, there's Splendas, there's things like that. Uh, in this particular case, uh, you've got stuff like Truvia, which is going to be Stevia plus some erythritol, but that is, uh, it's good to go. And that's a decent price on it. Normally, I was hoping they'd have it here. Uh, normally, I would get Lakanto because I like monk fruit much better. So there's usually Lakanto monk fruit, which you can get at just about any Costco. I'm not sure. Maybe they're sold out here. Maybe with some in display. Uh, it's the same kind of thing, except much, much healthier in the way of uh, monk fruits 
technically more of an herb. Okay, so it has a different effect within your body. It doesn't digest, and doesn't digest by that I mean it doesn't turn into any kind of glucose in your body. Now, it's, when you look at stevia, sure you have antibacterial components and everything like that, but I'm just a fan of monk fruit because technically it's a little bit cleaner in the body. So if you see Lakanto monk fruit, I would go for that one instead. 31. I mean, that's a no-brainer, so a lot cheaper. But here's the thing. So this is erythritol and monk fruit extract. Monk fruit is much better for you. In terms of what it's gonna do for overall blood sugar, what it's gonna do for your overall health, I would take between these, this one. Um, I talk about Lakanto all the time, so this is pretty cool. So they're not probably at all Costco's because I haven't seen them at my uh, other Costco close by, but definitely gonna get some of that. So check them out if you have a Costco nearby. Agave, we already talked about that, how that is definitely sketchy because it's pure fructose. Uh, if this was an actual baking video, I would definitely recommend the blanched almond flour. People will say that almonds have what are called anti-nutrients. Don't worry about it with blanched almond flour. The whole point with blanched, you don't have the skin. The anti-nutrients are in the skin, okay? And what that means is when you eat whole almonds, yes, it can stop the absorption of some of the other foods that you're eating, but blanched almond flour is the way to go simply because, you see, there's no skin in there. So you're just getting the fats. Although almond flour, I would recommend going for like hazelnut flour instead, or diluting almond flour with coconut flour to get a little bit more of a uh, just a better fatty acid profile and some fiber in the mix these are awesome look at these ingredients this is pancake mix cassava starch organic coconut flour a little bit of almond flour eggs and some leavening which is simply a monocalcium phosphate and sodium bicarbonate baking soda salt monk fruit which i love and spice that is so clean and that is a pancake that's super clean pancake. You mix it with water and there you go. So huge win and huge win to Costco for having these guys here. Uh, my toddler loves these things. They also have a keto version, which I don't think they have at Costco, uh, but that paleo version is amazing. Okay, we've covered most of like the little snack food sections. Now I just wanna go for some of the just more critical basic things that I think you should stock your pantry with. Uh, avocado oil, this avocado oil spray is great, but if you're going bang for the buck, I would recommend that you try to find a jug of it. So I'm gonna hold on to this, let's see higher smoke point, high oleic acid content, very overall, oh, there we go. Yes, this is what I would stock my pantry with. Good old avocado oil. Put this guy back. I am big on Mediterranean diets. So avocado oil, olive oil are my absolute jam. Okay, we've got uh, Kirkland Signature Extra Virgin Olive Oil. $11.99 for that giant jug of it. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, that's balsamic. No, that is. No, it's still extra virgin. All different kinds. Let's see what else they've got here. Okay. So, I'm just an olive oil nerd, so I know this. Okay. Nestled in the lush mountains of central California, this is probably coming from... Yeah, this is probably coming from, like, the woodlands or, like, an area of California that I know of uh, where they start to grow a lot of olives, where, the, where they grow a lot of olives. I know that because I'm originally a Northern California native, and uh, so I am very, very particular. So I like Australian olive oils and I like California olive oils and I like some Italian olive oils. You just have to be really, really careful of where those olives are grown. I know that this Kirkland one is actually pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll link out down below to a company called Wellness Grove. They're the olive oil that I would recommend. Uh, you can get them online. They have super concentrated versions of olive oil super shelf stable. They know how to do it so that the antioxidants stay strong because the hydroxytyrosol is one of the most important things out of that. And that is a very fragile, fragile antioxidant in that oil. Remember, you cook with the avocado oil and you drizzle with the olive oil, okay? That way you get your fatty acids, but you can cook in that oil. This canned chicken, I will just go ahead and tell you, don't bother, okay? Chicken breast, meat, water, seasoning, salt, modified food starch, sodium phosphates. Okay, the food starch is what I don't like. They basically add a bunch of food starch to volumize the chicken and make it a little bit better. Be careful. Uh, this company, Shrewd Food, it's kind of an interesting product. Okay, so they use milk protein isolate and then they weigh, weigh Parmesan cheese. It's not the cheapest thing in the world and I'm not gonna get it because it's not an essential for my pantry, but it's pretty cool and I know these guys. Uh, they started out as a keto brand, but they've branched off and they've done quite a bit more. So definitely just a good old fashioned, just healthy lower carb product. Okay, let's take a look at mayonnaise real quick. Unless they have the Primal Kitchen avocado mayo, all the stuff, yeah, soybean oil. Be careful of the mayonnaise here. So we gotta look for like Primal Kitchen, stuff like that. Ooh. Wild Alaska pink salmon, 520 
milligrams omega-3s per serving. Ingredients, pink salmon. Talk about shelf stable and solid, that's good to go. If you wanna have your omega-3s in a simple can, definitely wanna go for these bad boys. Um, albacore, I like albacore, but you pay a lot of money for albacore when quite frankly, you can get the same point across with chunk light and less mercury. I'm not gonna get them on this haul, but I also recommend uh, this brand, Nutiva Chia Seeds. Super good omega-3 content here. But the thing I like about it is, if you're in a situation where you just, I don't know, you're hungry but you don't really wanna eat, take a tablespoon or two of this, mix it with a little bit of almond milk, and let it sit for 15 minutes and you have yourself a chia pudding. Then you just add some stevia or add some of that Lakanto monk fruit, off to the races. Uh, this stuff, yes, shelf stable. I just don't think it's that good of a bang for the buck. Okay, it's cauliflower, water, and malic acid. All right, there's 12 servings and it's 10 bucks for this. And it's, it's a little packet of cauliflower. Convenient, yes. Shelf stable, yes. Healthy, yes. Cost effective, not really. Okay, I used to love this stuff until I learned a little bit more about phytoestrogens. So the good news is it's only organic soybeans and it's a great low carb pasta. Look at 21 grams of carbs, 12 of which is fiber. Okay, yes, it will definitely get you moving. And is it a good pasta alternative to wheat? It's like, I would say yes, I would probably take this over wheat pasta, but if there's like a lentil pasta or something like that, that would be a better move. Let's see what this one is. This looks like it might be lentil. Ah, okay, it is. Okay, but it's lentil flour, brown rice flour, and buckwheat flour. If they just got rid of that brown rice flour, this would be an amazing product. Again, once again, brown rice flour, much cheaper. So the reason I wanted just the lentil flour is the brown rice flour is high glycemic. Rice is high glycemic. It's gonna spike your blood sugar. Although it's brought down by the fact that there's lentil flour in there, it's still, in my opinion, it feels like it's fluffing it up a little bit. So it's an okay pasta. I would definitely recommend having that. But again, it's not gonna make my 100% cut. I'd probably give it a, six or seven out of 10. I'm trying to only purchase like eight through tens here, eights, nines, and tens. I didn't see sardines either. Normally I would say load up on sardines, uh, absolutely. Straight ginseng tea. Wow, that's awesome. That was a genuine discovery, a genuine quote of me saying, wow, awesome. Because I've never seen this before. I'm a huge, huge fan of ginseng. It is not practical for people to buy pure ginseng. Look at that price. Okay, there's 80 tea bags in there. So yes, that's not bad. But ginseng, it's what I like to switch to later on in the day. It doesn't seem to give you that uh, cardiotonic effect. What that means is it doesn't get your heart rate all jacked up, but it keeps your brain awake. So after say 12, 1 p.m., I'll usually switch to ginseng. For the sake of this video, it's not worth me buying, but I'm gonna make a note of that because that is truly awesome. That really is cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're in the beverages here now. I don't think there's a lot we're gonna find here, but it's worth taking a quick quick peek through. Uh, okay, if you're looking for shelf-stable milks, most important thing is, make sure you go for unsweetened almond milk, but I'm gonna show you something. The stabilizers they usually have to use. Okay, we've got organic almond base, filtered water, organic almonds, organic vanilla flavor, that's actually not bad, sea salt, sunflower lecithin, locust bean gum, gallon gum, vitamin A palmitate. Ooh, here we go. Ergo calciferol. Yep, here we go. DL, alpha calciferol, uh, zinc gluconate, that's not, and cyanocobalamin, vitamin B12 from cyanocobalamin form. Um, some of those preservatives in there make me not want to get this at all. Let me compare. Almond base, calcium carbonate, sea salt, sunflower less than locust bean gum, gel and gum, palm tape, ergo calcil. Yep. So for all, it's almost the exact same ingredients. What's the difference? Oh, one's organic, one's not. Same ingredients, but what about their oat milk? Okay. Rolled oats, rolled oat flour, organic sunflower oil, calcium carbonate, natural flavors, sunflower less than sea salt. Okay. Ergo calcil for all. I'm not, it's not the worst but I think you could do a lot better. So the shelf stable almond milks and stuff like that, you really gotta be careful. Let's see what's in this coconut milk. Wow, ha ha, there we go. Organic coconut water, organic coconut cream, and gel and gum or gel and gum, depending on where you are. Definitely would wanna get this. The issue is, is this one, no, this one's unsweetened. 
no added sugar. Okay, so in all the options of shelf-stable milks, coconut milk's the way to go. Okay, might not be your favorite if you're gonna be keeping it in a fridge, but if you're stuck with just the pantry, heck yes, that's awesome. It's basically like buying coconut milk in a can, really. It's just a little bit more uh, diluted with water. So that makes the cut, I'm gonna get some of that. Coconut water is a sugar trap, in my opinion. All right, so you have coconut water, although it ends up having a, a good amount of electrolytes in it, it's not worth it just because of all the sugar that you get out of it. So avoid that kind of stuff. Um, people often think I'm gonna load up on coconut water because in the pantry, that's a great place for it, right? You think, okay, there's an emergency, anything like that, you're gonna have your electrolytes. Nah, it doesn't work quite like that. You're much better off just bringing some uh, magnesium with you, and loading your pantry up with that, and then just getting regular water. All right, we got one quick stop here at sort of the front of Costco section uh, where they have other little treats, other little you know, nut snacks and stuff like that. Let's see what we got here. So these are basically Costco brand kind bars. Almonds, dark chocolate flavored coating. Oh, chicory root, inulin sugar. That already loses. I don't even need to spend any more time there. Soy lecithin, dry whole milk. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, cashews, FYI. They are the highest in phytic acid, the highest in phytates, which means they have the worst uh, anti-nutrient profile. What that means is they chelate excess minerals, they chelate nutrients in your intestinal tract and make it so you don't absorb the good nutrients out of them. So they're kind of a net, net zero food, right? Net zero nutrient food. Uh, they're just calories and they're also the highest carb nut. So practically any, no fiber in there. It's not really worth it. Compare that to the pecans that I got. Four grams of carbs, three grams of fiber. Eight grams of carbs, less than one gram of fiber. So stick with my pecans. I can definitely see doing this haul how many snack foods Costco has. I knew there was a lot, but yeah, it's a whole lot. Uh, these rice rollers, let's see. Yeah, still a bunch of sugar in these. I actually am not, a, not opposed to just having some uh, Chicken salad. To having some rice cakes or anything like that. What's, this is cool. Well, wow, this is really cool. Organic. Okay. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds. That's actually a really nice omega-3 zinc blend here. Organic coconut, organic pumpkin seeds, organic sunflowers, organic cane sugar. Why? Organic brown rice syrup, organic. Why? 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 This is so cool. This was perfect. Coconut for your MCTs. Pumpkin seeds for your zinc. Sunflower seeds for just a decent, decent monounsaturated fatty acid profile. Chia seeds for your alpha linolenic acid and your soluble fiber, which is exactly what we're seeing there, okay? But then they put cane sugar and organic brown rice syrup. They could have easily just done stevia or coconut sugar or coconut, co excuse me, coconut syrup. That's a bummer because that actually is a really good product. I would say if you're like looking for a little I don't know, indulgence, it would be okay, but I'm not gonna stock my pantry in it. Uh, we have to talk about this one because this one always deceives me. Every time I see it, I get excited. Baked seaweed crisps, but rice chips, organic tapioca starch, then somewhere down the line is organic seaweed. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Same kind of thing here, seaweed crunch. Seaweeds, almonds, roasted buckwheat, snack sauce, which is organic cane sugar, purified water, refined salt, honey, food starch is modified. Uh, here's a good chance for me to talk about yeast extract powder. It's just another word for monosodium glutamate. So yeast extract is still just MSG. Okay, and then fructo oligosaccharides. Sounds like a very daunting thing. It's actually not that bad. Fructo oligosaccharides are just uh, an indigestible sugar from fruit that actually is halfway decent for you. It's a pr uh, prebiotic in a lot of senses. So it's really not that that I'm worried about, but the yeast extract powder, basically excitotoxin to make something taste better. And then we get back into the chocolate. Not gonna even touch on that. More dark chocolate covered apricots. Sounds good, but okay. As we make our way to the end of this little snack haul, let's take a look at this last little aisle here something new green tea blend it's kind of cool matcha green tea flavored cashews roasted salted almonds honey roasted almonds lemon flavored dried apples i see what they're going whoa that's a lot of ingredients canola peanut oil cottonseed oil almonds canola peanut cottonseed oil honey roasted almonds almonds sugar canola <laughs> cool concept but all the sugar just kills it uh just fyi these are probably a little bit expensive but 
Let's see what these have. Almonds. Oh my goodness. Okay. So garlic, herb, and olive oil. This is just why you have to look at things. Almonds, then the next ingredient, vegetable oil. Almond, canola, and or safflower oil. Then sea salt, then roasted garlic, then spices, then oregano, basil, rosemary. And then the last ingredient is extra virgin olive oil. That way they can justify putting it on the label. I will say though, the nice thing is, since these almonds don't have the skin, you at least don't get the phytic acid. So that's solid, but still loaded with just unhealthy oils. And kind of jerkies there. Uh, quick note, just on jerkies, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on them. I would say with jerkies, just try to make sure that you get ones that uh, do not have soy sauce, don't have gluten in them. Normally I get pistachios, but again, I'm not doing a nut haul, I'm just doing a pantry haul. I will say macadamia nuts are definitely a good to go one. But when it look, comes down to, I spent, let's see, two pounds, I'm getting for 11.99 of pecans. And here I get a pound and a half for 20 bucks. The fatty acid profile is definitely better in these, better omega-3, omega-6 ratio. So if you can afford a couple extra bucks, get these guys. I'm on a little bit of budget. I'm gonna stick with the pecans, but I will say macadamias are the go-to nut. <laughs> Basically, it would be good if it didn't have chocolate chips in it. It's got chocolate chips in it, and it's pure sugar. I could go on and on and on and on. I think we've got a pretty good array here. So let's go ahead, let's check out, let's get our pantry basics, and then we can do another video where we stock up on more pantry, I don't know, essentials and not so essentials. I probably could have spent well over $1,000 getting some decent pantry items here, but I wanted to be extra critical. So I know that I was very, very, very critical and somewhat negative on some of the ingredients, but I wanted to really be able to instill upon you what you should be looking for and what really makes a product a 10 out of 10. And you probably realize that it's really hard to find a 10 out of 10 in a pantry item. It just is. I would say Birch Benders makes the cut. I would say that um, the Protein 2O probably makes the cut. The pink salmon, the canned salmon makes the cut as being close to 10 out of 10. But everything else, you know, you're always gonna have a little bit of give and a take. You have some sacrifices and that's just part of it. You just moderate it, you know? Hello. How's it going? Thank you much. Thank you. So I really do appreciate you being a part of this channel and watching all this content. And if you have ideas for future grocery hauls or future Costco videos or anything like that, just put them down below in the comment section and we can work hard to create them. As always, keep it locked in. I'll see you in the next video.